So the today's topic is about uh, Docker and advanced containerization. So you use Docker to achieve advanced containerization goals here. Okay. Now let's just a kind of refresher. What exactly is a, a Docker again? So Docker is an open source platform that provides way to create, deploy, and run application inside container. So suppose you have Python, Node.js, Go, whatever the is your programming language, you want to containerize it. And you can then run on, say, Windows, Linux, Mac, whatever the world has to offer as a machine. You can run anywhere. Okay. So, Now, containers are lightweight, portable, and isolated environments uh, that can run application and its dependencies consistently across different systems, just like I told you, including development, testing, production. So yeah, if you have multiple stages, that actually helps you to achieve this kind of a very consistent code base among all those areas. Okay. Now, uh, why people use Docker in the production and staging and testing? So they want the code to stay same, but based on some maybe some environment variable or based on some maybe external ingestion or external factor, the code, how is behave or maybe parameters will be different. That also we can manage by Docker. Okay. Uh, now that part, when we cover the Kubernetes part, I will uh, show you even better way. But for now, think about Docker is simple a way to create the virtual images, or say smaller virtual images that can run on any machine. That's the Docker basics. Now, um, like Docker, I mean, after you have the Docker image, uh, and I will show you how to build, make the Docker image and all. So after you have the Docker image, you can run on locally. You can then or push to the, some kind of remote uh, place. Maybe just think about, suppose you have one, um, say, video. And that video you upload to S3. Now from that S3, you download to any people, other computer can download from the S3 or maybe any other, uh, say, Google Drive, for example. And that person can download the your video and play it, right? So similar way, Docker will create an image that you can store in any uh, repository, such as Docker Hub, or say maybe there are many other places uh, where you can store the Docker image and people, other people will pull the image and able to run in different, different machines. That's how Docker works basically. Yeah, this is uh, probably the most important factor while understanding Docker. This is the Docker architecture. So how Docker actually works. Now, uh, you may see in the screen, uh, all these things, like what, what this means. Now, how you uh, like utilize Docker. To utilize Docker, you use Docker CLI. So what are the Docker CLI? The commands. Use a Docker in, uh, say, PAS. Like you run normally these commands. Right? So normally, uh, you can go to uh, your uh, the, uh, CLI and you use Docker. Now, if I don't use Docker, it might, okay, it's working. Uh, but I should start, like, even it's working, but if without Docker machine or Docker host, it will not, not work. So I have to start the Docker, uh, my side Docker, uh, this machine also using this Docker desktop, or you can just use Docker command to start the Docker host. Also, that's also possible. So yeah, if you see Docker, uh, these commands, Docker have multiple these commands, right? So uh, this uh, Docker, for example, uh, this yeah, builder, build X, uh, compose, config, container. Um, context, image, manifest, network, node, plugging, scan, uh, secret, um, then uh, uh, survey, stack, swarm, system, trust, volume, right? These are the command that you have. And not just that, you see log, skill, load, import, and a lot of commands, to be honest. You don't have to learn all the commands, but know that that exists. And some of the commands are actually very useful, okay? Now, yeah, so this, this is the command. And you use Docker, say Docker PS to see what are the running uh, container. Right now, suppose no container running. Now, for example, I run any command, say I have images, go to images, and I'll just go for, say, um, uh, 
nginx for example i search for nginx it's not there so i will just uh, get from cloud so docker pull then nginx okay and since in my local it doesn't have any uh, say nginx it will get this docker in nginx image from docker repository right now suppose now if i search about this nginx oh, it is available now here right i can run it so docker we can run like docker uh, then run nginx uh, then we can use say port number for example uh, i forgot this default port numbers so it's a, suppose you have any confusion any time you can actually go to google and search about say nginx docker registry then nginx and so now search for the nginx we'll see the commands here yeah this is the one so this is a very you know typical example now uh how to run and all that you will find it uh, say how hosting simple static content right so uh now if you go down mm, for example what is the port okay port 80 so see it uh, we can uh, link port 80, 80 to 80. 80 is the default port okay now we can go to this you know, docker run nginx and port 80 80 to 80 and then uh see uh, we have to map so port mapping we did then uh, run this nginx and if you see the tag it's latest tag right so when mentioning the tag you will use latest or you can give any version also that's it so it started if you go to browser if you go local host then 8080 see it's working so now we have the image working for us and you see the nginx default page okay so this is how you normally a flow to you know uh, pull images from this docker hub uh, it's nginx only then of course it had different different tags different different versioning different different use cases uh, smaller images larger images more feature based on our requirement we choose how we, we pull it okay now uh that's that's what we understand now let's go to our next page Mm, audience window yeah so yeah this is our command that i want to show you that you have docker uh, command that is actually a docker client okay that you use to pull images see pull build run i mean i show you pull command and run command right and of course after a few slides we'll go to the build command as well okay so what happened actually behind the scene the moment you do run docker run command build command and pull command it will send this instruction to the docker host so behind the scene, this, this machine actually Docker host, okay? And uh, there is a virtual Docker host running via this uh, Docker desktop software. Suppose it's a no, not desktop, normal software. There also, there is a piece of software that is a Docker host, okay? And this client, this Docker client, sending the, like calling an API uh, behind the scene of this Docker host. And this Docker host kind of API server, think of it as the API server, okay? That's like you're developing, say, your Python APIs or say any other programming APIs. So Docker host have this, their API, different, different APIs, okay? And this client, this Docker command, call those APIs behind the scene. And how you run, uh, so how you supply the command, based on that command only, they execute. Maybe, you know, uh, you run the images, you uh, delete the images, maybe you pull the image, all the stuff that you want that you instruct to the docker host and behind the scenes docker host actually doing the, the work for you and maybe say pull image right i pull uh, nginx right so what happened it go to the nginx i mean uh, docker registry or docker hub it pull the image and you now have the image available and i use docker build to run that particular uh, uh, image make a it's, i make a container in the sense i make that image in a runnable state or running state so that is the running uh, we can do uh, it's serving our web page or we may go to inside this particular container and then different other commands right we can do all the stuff so this is the basic idea client is the docker command that you use the docker client uh, docker host behind the scenes think of as a docker server or docker uh, host server which have apis so this client actually behind the scene calling all these apis and upon receiving the apis like normally what do you have what do you do when you receive a 
API call. You maybe store data in database. Maybe you pull uh, API data from other places like say GitHub or other places. So similarly, Docker host job have specific things. It build image. It uh, can run uh, image to make a container. It can pull image from the uh, other places. It can show you logs and do all this command. I have shown you last time, right? Just swim is back. It do all the stuff. So yeah, this is a basic example uh, or architecture wise idea. Now let's go through all this, you know, uh, each this component uh, in a greater depth. Now, this Docker uh, architecture is a design in a client server architecture, like client calling the APIs that way. The client known as the Docker client is a command line tool that allow user to interact with the Docker daemon. So Docker server is running as a daemon. So you can restart it. You can check the status and do all the stuff. Like say, I think yeah, in Ubuntu it's a problematic. Maybe while showing the cloud part, I will show you there running all the commands. Now, uh, in the command line tool that allow user to interact with Docker daemon, which is like a Docker server uh, responsible for managing Docker images, containers, network, and volumes. And um, here's a breakdown. Like what are the missed components you can see here? Uh, let me quickly check that. So first one is a Docker client. So Docker client uh, is a, a command line interface. By now you know that that uses uh, yeah, the Docker command to interact uh, with the Docker server or Docker host. The client sends command to the Docker daemon or server or host, what you want to call it, and receives the response from this particular daemon. Okay. Now Docker client can be installed on the same machine as the Docker daemon, or it can be installed on a remote machine. So suppose uh, we have you can separately install Docker client in your local machine and your server can be a Ubuntu server. It's fine. You can do all the stuff by the way. And uh, so you can do like you're, you're running local Docker command to run a remote and there is an option that's R or something. You can supply what is the remote server. You can mention that also. So yeah, uh, then you have this Docker daemon or the Docker server. Okay, so this Docker daemon is a server component of the Docker that manages Docker images, container, networks, and volumes, and everything else as well. Uh, where user can store, share, and download the Docker images. However, user can set up uh, their own. Uh, sorry, uh, a Docker daemon runs in the background and listen for API requests. As I said, like you are developing APIs and sharing with the world and different browse or a postman calling why that you're calling the APIs. Similar way, this Docker client actually uh, calling all these uh, APIs in Docker server uh, uh, and, and things happening, say storing image, uh, deleting image, maybe pulling an image, all this stuff that you're talking about. Now, uh, it is responsible for starting, stopping, managing Docker containers, creating and managing Docker images, managing Docker networks and volumes, and actually even more than that as well. The third component is Docker registry. Now a Docker registry is a registry like a storage place, like your Google Drive or say uh, Amazon S3, where you store your images like or say uh, files or a lot of sub archives, right? Similar way, uh, Docker registry is a storage place for these Docker images, where you can store the image, share that particular image with other people, do all the stuff and this is absolutely necessary because you are making an image in your local how your local image can run on say, any remote server or remote cluster in Kubernetes and all that they need a central place to pull these images and then only after pulling the image and available in Kubernetes system it will start running the images right so you need some remote place and this docker registry is that remote place where you store your images and you can, of course, share it, store it, download it. The Docker image, you can delete the image if you don't need. Fine by that. Now, uh, however, we can also set up their own. I mean, of course, like this is a public registry talking about, but there are ways you can have your own Docker registry, uh, kind of private, private version of it as well. You can do set up that one, but it's hard to manage by ourselves. That's the negative point, point here. Now, uh, the Docker images, right? So Docker image is a read-only template uh, that contains the application and its dependencies. Now Docker image are built using Docker file, which is a text file that contains instruction for building the image. Once built, Docker image can be stored in registry and can be used for creating Docker containers. Now this image part will be coming to a greater depth within a few minutes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now what you have? You have Docker network. Now, uh, what is Docker network? So, in our local system, say our local home, 
uh, we I have actually so many, you know, uh, this wires, the routers on that, right? In Docker, you can too also create virtual networkings, right? So like say custom networking lines and all that. So virtual networking, you can say in simple words. So that is Docker network. So the Docker network are used to connect Docker containers to each other. Like we have one phone and say, say other device, for example, whatever the device is, both have the network connection, right? In internet, we can communicate with each other, right? But Docker are a component isolated by design. And if this two require communications for a say microservice architecture, then it need to communicate over a secure virtual uh, networking, right? It cannot talk over public network, which is the internet. It cannot do that. So it has to have its own private virtual network, which you can create via this Docker network. And of course, we'll come to the demo part, how to create all that later on. Then we have Docker volumes. So Docker volumes are a persistent data generated by Docker container. Docker volume can be mounted into container at runtime, allowing data to be shared and pers uh, persistent across the multiple container. Now, why even we need these Docker volumes? For example, for, so the Ganesh example, he installed a, uh, this curl, then htop, all the software, right? The moment he restart the container, the things that he have installed will go away because by design by design docker containers are ephemeral that means it will not remember what you did if you restart the container if we want to persist say the logs data or any data or say all the things that you progress do on all the stuff then you need to use this docker volume there are other way called docker commit but docker commit is kind of very depreciated thing i will not suggest it instead and better solution to use docker volumes which actually creates what it's in your host machine you have hard drive right so it create a virtual space mapping okay from docker container uh, uh, storage with the, your host or your normal computer or maybe remote computer actual file system that way whatever changes you do with docker that actually gets saved in the actual instances or maybe machines storage system that is the Docker volume does. So these are the absolute minimum required component in interviews also. They may ask you uh, architecture related question. What is Docker client or is Docker daemon? Uh, why we need client and daemon? So because it's server, uh, server client, uh, client server architecture, that's why. Then I ask you very normal question around this Docker architecture anytime. Okay. Any questions about this Docker architecture? Because this is a conceptual part. Need very good understanding. Let me know any doubt on this particular Docker architecture. Uh, Sandeep, mm -hmm. about um, the network, you mentioned that Docker's are obviously separated yes. um, by design, right? But uh, in the point number seven, Docker volume, what does the last line mean? Like allowing data to be shared and persisted right. across so, multiple containers. Ultimately, a volume. Volume is your, your hard disk, okay? Yes. You're, you're running three container, okay, in your same, same machine and you have mm -hmm. a hard disk. That hard disk volume is available to actually all the containers, right? Because it's running in your machine. So what this means, uh, suppose, okay, okay. <laughs> so Understood. you can mount all three containers in a single place. Oh, okay, okay. I was thinking in a different way. Sorry. Uh, yes. I understand okay, what you're saying. You're thinking about saying that network storage system. It's ha, 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 ha. The network it. storage system yeah, or yeah, yeah. <clears throat> some kind of EBS you attach with ECQ right, or something that's, like that. That's it will actually have a bit its own. different. That, that's okay, a bit different. Okay. Okay, and I'll come to that because we have sure. dedicated section on the volume as well. <laughs> sure, sure. So this this ideas are actually, if, the, if you learn this, nobody can take you down in Docker, to be honest. So... <laughs> Anyone have any questions? Feel free to ask. Good. I guess everyone's good then. Docker client, as I told you, I will come to greater depth for each of this component because this is absolutely necessary for your future work purpose and your interviews. Now, uh, what is Docker client? I think you guys already know. I will not waste your time. Just think, it's a it's a client. It's a, it's how you consume APIs like a Postman. A, but Postman, you have to enter the URL and all that. Here, you don't have to enter the URL. You have to just enter the commands: Docker build, Docker pull, Docker push, PS, uh, RM for removing. So these are the things you can you know learn later on. Also, I will show it anyway. Next issue, um, and you know you can use this command and get used to these kind of commands.
okay now docker daemon i think this one is is you need a bit more understanding so i will just explain a bit more so docker daemon is a server component or ser think of it as the server itself uh, of the docker uh, system that manages docker images uh, containers networks volume all these components and this daemon is run in the background so uh, you don't see normally until as you check the background processes uh, and this uh, like listen to the apis whatever docker uh client calling it's always ready to serve the request and it is responsible for starting stopping managing uh, all the docker containers images and every every single component to be honest now uh, docker is responsible for any particular task i mean of course it have everything but these are the things that that you want to be aware of proactively so first is image management so the docker daemon manages docker images which are used to create docker containers it download the images from docker registry that like i show you a few minutes back and uh, such as docker hub and store locally on the docker host container management the do the docker daemon is responsible for starting stopping managing the docker containers it creates a new container for docker image when the user executes it it's the, the, the using the command docker run and it stops and removes the container when the execution uh, execution like if you use docker stop it will stop it or maybe docker rm command will remove the image okay oh, sorry not remove the image it will remove the uh, container if it is running then you have to use dash f to force it okay now networking docker uh, daemon manages docker network which are used to connect uh, docker uh, uh, containers to each other and to the, uh, the outside of the world and it provides several type of networking drivers including bridge host overlay uh, then uh, mac vlan or say mac virtual lan make msc vlan right the word fully and to support different networking and we'll come to that in a bit more later okay there's nothing it allow you to connect inter doc container communication and outside of the world uh, how you communicate then there is volume management the volume understand this is simply mapping your docker space uh, to your host uh, hard disk space that that thing we call volume management and this volume management uh, i mean this docker daemon only manages uh, docker volume which are used to store persistent fixed data so that it will not go away if you restart the container Uh, and uh, docker volume can be mounted into a container in the runtime as well so you're dynamically running suppose some moment you want to think okay let's start saving the data you can do all that and uh, which will allow i mean of course it allow the multiple sharing between multiple containers suppose you have uh, a database okay and database in the sense for example um a mongo db or any database okay and in order to serve request you have multiple containers 10 containers for example and this 10 containers you are balancing the load in this 10 containers ultimately is interacting with a single space or say remote location you cannot have 10 different databases otherwise it will copy create 10 type of databases you don't want that you want the data to be stored in a single or central repo central place central hard drive and 10 containers or 20 containers 30 container interact with this particular file system so that you have better performance of course you have to be very very aware of this multi parallelism uh, the the db which support this multi parallelism or say some kind of locking and all then only it start making sense uh, what happen uh, nothing okay Uh, then the api so docker daemon of course uh, let's come to that part juicy part right so apis the docker uh, daemon exposes a rest api which can actually consumed by this docker client right and uh, allow you to interact with the docker programmatically so i mean you can use uh, like consume this apis programmatically this rest apis uh, which actually ultimately this docker the right also use sorry use that as a uh, like they also use it whatever the docker command use it you can use that in your uh, apis like a post when you can trigger the docker apis that you can do actually now docker daemon uh, runs as a background process uh, the docker host and docker host means what this computer maybe ec2 instance and all that and listen to a unique socket or port for example 
um, or send network port from the API request from the Docker client. Okay. And this Docker daemon can be configured with various options such as storage drivers, network drivers, and logging option and customize it. Daily. So you can customize as you want for this Docker. So these are the things for Docker daemon I wanted to uh, discuss in further. And anyway, we'll learn about more components. Now this Docker registry. Now I think you guys now understand what Docker is. is. It is some remote place where you store your images. And uh, of course, this Docker Hub, ECS, e sorry, not ECS, ECR, Elastic Container Registry, GCR, Google Container Registry, ACI, Amazon Container Registry, something is there. And there are a lot of other uh, places also which uh, can store the image. So, uh, main functioning. Of course, image storage, image management, you know, deleted, updated, and all that. Access control, who can access what image, you can uh, define that. Then replication, so replication is what? Suppose um, uh, Docker is supports replication of Docker image across multiple servers. Suppose you want, you're running an enterprise server, okay, and your client are actually all over the world. Uh, you want your image to stay very closer to particular client uh, works or maybe your, your server, near to your server. Then what you can do, you can do multiple this kind of replication, which will single source only, but it will be as soon as you build and push, it will be replicated to all the remote repositories. And based on the region, it will automatically pull the latest image and that will be much faster. Then search, Docker HD provide a search function that allow you to search the Docker image and pull it. That's, that's by now you want. So the pull command, the, the moment you're using pull command, you're pulling an image, right? So behind the scene, of course, a search going on and then the search is uh, selecting a latest of this particular keyword that I've searched or some particular uh, image that I've searched and it will pull that particular image, right? That's there. I think uh, that's this part. Okay, let's cover also. So Actually, you can... I have... uh, Sorry go on. Uh, ah, so sorry. in real time, somebody mm -hmm. uh, like uh, some of the people uh, mm -hmm. in my project, actually, they are talking about they have built that image and uh, they are, uh, I don't know where they are exactly maintaining that uh, uh, images. So in uh, uh, can you please tell me how they are actually maintaining that registry in case you and me are working in the same project, you have created mm -hmm. that image. So where exactly they will keep that image uh, to use other. Uh, are they using any or they're not using any registry? No, they are not using it. Just, uh, okay. And then they should. They should use. I mean, do you guys have AWS account, right? Yeah, they are using AWS only. Correct. Okay. Then in AWS, there is a thing called AWS ECR. Okay. Sorry, this one, this one. Elastic Container is a service in AWS. You search by it, and they only will get all these commands, how to push and all that. Let me see if I can log in quickly. I can okay. Push. So they, hmm. uh, they will build the image and they will keep into that uh, registry. Right, right. Okay. Exactly. So they will uh, like say so they will log in into the say like, so first you go to your AWS machine. Okay. And I also now forgot. Okay. Let me see if I can remember my password well. I don't think it's valid password to be honest. Anyway, I mean. Uh, you can use the Docker Hub. I think it will be a good example. Easy. So do you know the Docker Hub? Yeah. There also, but I will not suggest Docker Hub. Uh, for showing the demo part, I'm saying, but you can go to ECR and do I mean, a lot of tutorial available. I also created a lot of tutorial. So you can see this command, create repository. And they are giving you instruction. First tag it. So Docker tag your local image name and tag name, whatever the image that you built. And this, this name we are giving, for example, I am giving a name called uh, my Python app. Okay. My Python app. Okay. And it's a public because they are very cheap guys. Okay. So if you want to push your local image to this particular remote repo, okay, you have to run Docker push. For example, I have built a say, it's, I do have a Docker images. Let's see. I should have. I mean, I I use a lot of things. Um, so I have this my simple demo. Okay, so I want to push this my simple demo to this particular uh, remote repo. So you have to first tag it. Uh, tag is already done. You can simply push your uh, this particular. Uh, yeah, push. Now first you have to tag it. So Docker dash t 
then uh, your that sample image, this one and v1. So whatever the image you built and the tag, then you need to tag with this remote repo. Okay. Now this command actually, if you go to, go to AWS, they will give you very detailed command. Okay, not like this half incomplete one. So you. Okay. Uh, oh God. Uh, Kandip, I can share. I have ECR. You have the command, right? No, yeah, I know ECR. I have. Oh, you, you have it? Yeah, share. you can share. Yes, yeah, yes. I can use that a little better because yeah. my account now is a lot of thing. <laughs> uh, you are host. Oh, I came to make you host, right? So just two minutes. Let me log in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you are the host now. That's actually a good thing. I mean, uh, ECR is very good, you know, in terms of if you want to store the image, uh, the privately, if you're using AWS, if it's, you are using Google Cloud, then you store it in GCR. Based on the requirement, you should do it. Okay, so let's see if I can log in. Yeah, you can take control. Uh, so yeah. Oh, you're showing? Yeah, I'm sharing. Able oh. to see? Oh, yeah, yeah. See, uh, just select any image, say back and flush, for example. See, if you use a view push command, you have very detailed command how to log in, how to you know build, how to even tag this. Tag. Oh, I'm using Dasty, it should be tag full command. Okay, that's why. But uh, yeah, then push command finally. For Windows, also, you have it. Same only. Okay, um, Ramakrishna. Uh, yeah, bro, got it. Okay, thanks, bro. So this is, I mean, and of course, click, uh, while click, cre creating the registry, just click on the registry and then give the name. And every instruction will find in this particular repo itself. Okay. Okay then. Let me make me myself a host first, or I can start sharing probably. Okay. So if we build our image and uh, just try to load it in uh, ecr or what should we do we should uh, create install the docker in ec2 create no, image no, no. over there and move no you can it. you can create from like locally also but then in local you have to set up the aws cli so okay. local you should have install aws cli and docker you'll do it you can do it okay okay anyway i mean we'll cover all that in the cloud session don't worry <laughs> everything is okay. covered in okay. the UAT of uh, this no, uh, uh, ECR, right? And because in Docker pull by default pull from uh, Docker. Uh, exactly. Right. Hmm. You have to specify Docker pull, then the complete URL of the particular image. You'll be able to pull from the particular uh, private repo. Okay. Otherwise, it will, if you just give the name of the repo, it will try to pull from this Docker hub because that's why it's default to. But if you have a particular say, custom repo, they say Docker. Uh, sorry, ECR or GCP, uh, GCR, those kind of stuff. You have to give the complete URL. And Gun is showing you the complete URL, right? There you are getting it. So we'll come to all these things later on. No worries. Okay. And otherwise, you can go to my tutorial. Actually, I have shown very you know YouTube videos. If you check my ECS video now, I have covered very greater depth. Oh, my channel. Right. Which is actually. So go to my videos and check the ECR, uh, sorry, ECR also you'll find it. Uh, build Docker image using Jenkins, so that's Jenkins one. But I've shown you how to normally also do it, ECS. Like basic ECS, learn AWS ECS and you'll find all there. Okay, how to build ECR image and everything is covered in this particular video. 10 videos, you'll have everything. Entire ECR and ECS also. Okay, check that one. Give the link anyway, uh, because if you're going to work with AWS uh, before jumping to Kubernetes, I will suggest look at the uh, this ECS part because many prefer actually this ECS. Sure. Okay, let's get back to the topic. This is a lot of slide we have to cover. Okay. That's that's the basic Docker history. Ultimately, you can have like many options are there. ECA, ECR, I must, I mean, Azure, 
Docker registry ADR something is there. Uh, GCR I know the, your Google Container Registry. All the other options are there. You can find and store. I will suggest if you are using AWS, then go for the ECR. Okay, and all the commands you will find there directly in the repo. Now, next one is the Docker images. Okay, so we we I mean we have the images like base images available from this Docker Hub and other places. Now, based on our own requirement, we can. Uh, create custom images, say our application and all that, right? So we can get custom images, which is the Docker images in general. We're talking about, of course, the images that we have available on Docker Hub or any image that we built, like these images, my simple them and all that. So if you use Docker, then uh, uh, images, these images that you see here, these are the images, of course, include the image that we pull from uh, this particular. Uh, for example, uh, Docker Hub or anything that we customly build. Okay, so all is available here. Now, let's understand a bit deeper into the Docker images. First, Docker images are the basic building blocks of the Docker containers. Without having a Docker image or any container image at all, you cannot make any container. So image is a must. You need an image. Okay, an image is a read-only template that contains the application and its dependencies. Now, for example, uh, you have this, you know, a modern USB stick based or maybe say hard, uh, that uh, CD-ROM based uh, OSS in the many, I mean, when I was learning, you know, hardware uh, things, uh, we had the images that we can spin to any machine and we could have run it. I, I mean, we don't care what is the existing OS in this particular machine. We just put it and run it. So that was actually a read-only file system or read-only files having the boot configuration, everything set up all there. We simply put it into the machine uh, CD-ROM and we could have run this particular uh, like machine with this particular CD drive. Okay. Now it's kind of that, but of course virtualized way. So it is also having a thing. You can think of that CD images as an image that you are putting inside this uh, Docker machine and uh, you're running command to start that machines or start that containers, start the instances of the images. Okay. So uh, this Docker images are read only file system and read only template, which have the, like, what is the base OS of this particular image or what OS uh, they will, it, the image will run or the container will run. Uh, what is the things or application that it will run? Uh, what is the exp port that is getting exposed? What is the logging mechanism? What is the network? No networking, but Others, other all other stuff. Say what are the command that you pre-configured to run in this image? All these things you are already putting in this image, uh, and it's you simply running that image into the any any other environment like Kubernetes, like ECS, like AKS, anywhere else. Okay. Now, uh, this Docker uh, images can be built using a Docker file. Now, what is the Docker file and all that will come to very greater depth. Maybe next slide only. And we will start making the images, and it's an interesting thing to learn. Uh, and this, uh, you know, Docker images for you know developing custom application, you must have to deal with this particular Docker images. Otherwise, you cannot run your application in anywhere. And there's some uh, key features uh, that you need to understand very well uh, in order to you know work with these images even better way. First is that layer architecture. So Docker images uh, built using a layer architecture, each layer in this image represents a change or modification into the previous layer. So suppose you get a base Nginx, okay? Then you're installing maybe others HTOP, that's a layer. Then you're installing say curl, that's another layer. Now, for example, you are installing or running any other command, okay? That is another layer. So you keep adding the layers and uh, this this other this that's that's what's called layer architecture so from the base image to final image whatever the command you run i will show you all of the commands and everything anyway those are the layers okay and uh, docker can reuse the layer across so one layer is very common and if you are making a build for another image that layer cache will get reused okay now uh, which actually finally made your build to be faster. So we, we like that. 
then versioning so docker images can be versioned using tags so you see that uh, the tags so when you run docker build uh, then dot image let's go to our python example i think uh, let's go to this uh, new new window then we go say our open our folder our cloud and we have this one right this done terminal so if we go inside this ep2 uh, then plus example and we have this in the plus example we have this docker file right now if we we have this docker file we want to make a custom version of this image so docker build uh, then dash t then give you the custom image name for example my uh, python app then this is after this colon we are giving v2 that means this is the tag name it could be v3 v4 v5 whatever the version that you want to give you can give we are giving say v2 then okay oh we forgot that you have to mention the path of the docker file so docker file is current directory right so dot that represents the current working directory and that's it. it it simply run it and if you do docker images it will show python my python app then the tag is v2 this is how we can create multiple version of the images that represent your changes suppose you have one application running version one you work on it you have your code changes approved in the master branch then out of that image the next image should be whatever is the um, previous image plus one and maybe of course you have the commit ids right so, so we can also build uh, images the tag of this commit id it will help us okay something is failing we understand okay this particular commit failed we report the developer back and that developer has to fix it that's how the flow works okay now let's go back no you understand the versioning it is simple tagging then caching so docker images are cached locally uh, on docker host which allow docker to reuse the images and have already built this caching mechanism can speed up the build so for example this this i mean the moment we build it was so fast isn't it because uh, it was using from cache so in the cache last time i built and there is no change right that's why we run and it's see cache cat is is run from the cache this part that uh, we had is 152 uh, built uh, size probably yes 139 after you know, maybe removing extra build stuff so what really what it done since we have run this command this part actually no change at all so it it didn't even create a new layer so it reused whatever we already had and that's why within few seconds since maybe it took maximum three seconds within that time we have our image ready so but suppose we in the requirement okay Let's go to the requirement and we add a new tool let's call it um xml for example you don't have anything but we, we made a change right so if we run build again see it will take a lot of more time than previously see it's doing all this stuff and after that only failed because there is no stuff called um uh, uh, xml so let's let me think what let's let's just copy from the another application django if there is anything in requirements sql parse for example i don't think it's there uh, let's see oh it's not there so we can just install this sql parse you can give the version name if you don't know it's fine just supply normally so it will keep three is installing and see now because up to the work directory uh, if you see the, up to this it all worked because it was no change this basically no change but uh, and this image also available to the locally so not, no need to pull if it's not there then it will pull the image before even running the build but this person this up to this link from line, line of five it changed that means that change has to be trigger that's why it didn't use the cache you have to run it next time if i say again run again app two or app three whatever you have to run see again catch it because no change so it detect the changes if there is no change then it will run no, not rerun the steps any change anywhere the file is changed you see the signature difference the what we call it 
the checksum difference is there md5 checksum is different it check internally then only it generate a new uh, it run the command again if it see okay no change in the uh, particular file structure all this particular file then it would have not run it okay uh, and see copy part also not change this time that's why but if we for example add another file say test dot txt so we we have a change in this particular file right dot means the current directory all the components so in our flask app example i have added a new file previously it has used this copy care from cache but this time if i build again see it didn't catch it see up it catch it up to the requirement because we have not changed anything in the requirement of txt we change in the file system we added a file that's why it didn't use the cache instead it's directly normally copied it that's how docker will works it reuse the cache to make everything faster any doubt in this image building part because you will be doing that that lot in your day to day business so containerizing mm -hmm. an application mm -hmm. and making the image of it they are if we understand logically they are sequential process that is same thing we are containerizing oh, okay. <laughs> the image okay that's it yes okay the same thing okay so ultimately the moment you're saying containerizing that means they are making a docker image this one this image if we use docker images we mm -hmm. see this image this this we use the build command to run it, build it that is the image right. that's it we are dockerizing it we are making the image okay 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 and uh, it's of course since image and you can share with docker hub with anyone else that's is portable security now docker actually give this can actually if you see this particular if you run docker command it give you all the available commands you see it added a scan command see scan it scan for any vulnerabilities and all the problems or security loopholes and all that that's why uh, i mean docker image building part is very crucial and Will you already see the basic example? There is some, um, you know, some advanced option given. You don't, you might not even need. Suppose, yeah, one part. Suppose this image. Okay, let's let's let me show you the the Docker image related commands a bit. Okay, so so Docker, you have to list the images. The Docker list. Sorry, let's get this. So Docker images command will list all the images. Okay, like this. Suppose I want to it 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 takes space one thirty nine MB some you know nine one MB I want to clean this up uh, maybe very securely I want to delete this particular one so this is the image name this is the tag name this is the image ID this ID is what you are looking for because you can delete by name but this ID by remove by ID is even easier so Docker then R M I remove image then give this particular image ID that's it delete it if you do Docker images you will not find it here anymore see no no so that my that python app part removed so and you can search about like search the images using this you know docker search the docker search yeah python probably support regex but it's fine so yeah only python related images you will be able to see okay that's it And if you want to see inside any particular, like what is the JSON configuration or, or the more detailed configuration, you can do this inspect command. Images. I want to see this Docker Python app, what inside this. So Docker inspect, not inside in the sense, how is the configuration, what are the layers and all that. So we can check this one. See, uh, it's layers definition, SHA, that, that command I told you is that, it checks the difference and all that. This is the how how this detects. If any difference happen, the file the triggering or the command, this this check again this particular SHA and it will re-trigger the if any change, then it will re-trigger it. Okay. So all this configuration you can see. This is a kind of bit advanced level, but it's good to know how behind the scene everything working. That will help you think better way. Okay. I think yeah, these are the things you to know basically about Docker images. Of course, Sorry, building... question again. Go on. Uh, so an image, uh, so it's a it's a 
it's a bundle of all the applications and the dependencies right exactly. does it does it uh, contain an underneath uh, web server or anything as well or it can contain like so i why i'm asking this question i'll tell you um back in like 2020 one of the projects i was working on how it used to work was um uh, the to- so they let's say there is the microservices mm. uh, uh let's just talk about an uh, uh, like a uh, node js file mm. or node js uh, the presentation file what they used to mm. call whatever it is so <clears throat> that code will be committed by the code uh, de- developer mm. and then the image of that would be created and that image used to get deployed so what i saw in somewhere uh, of that configuration that there was a tomcat image also mm. being bundled yes. into that yes yes you can do that Very so easy. i mean is it a standard practice on the or so i mean uh, was it like a containerization of even the tomcat along with the application just to no. make them in one alongside entity? application is not a good idea you should use okay. networking for that so what what should have been done uh, mm-hmm. the tomcat should be a stand alone image you can run it uh-huh. and in that tomcat as a configuration you should i mean tomcat you can configure stuff right so you can pass a configuration dynamically uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. that will redirect to other Um, other uh, application, other Node.js application is running. So, say Node.js running on port eighty uh, eighty, Tomcat running on port eighty, or say maybe Node.js running on port three thousand, Tomcat running on eighty, and upon receiving trapping on port eighty, if it see okay, it's for Node.js application, it will redirect or forward the traffic to Node.js application. That should have done. You can do dog and network. We will come ah, to the dog. Ah, right? okay, okay. That's Understood. the better the way. Yeah, yeah. Even in Apache and Tomcat, I have done these re- redirections when we don't want to use load balancers. Uh, we, we should actually. So this, this, you know, this Nginx and you know, uh, even Tomcat also, <laughs> we have load balancer support. To be honest, we don't use it, but there are options available. Yes, load yes. Balancer. That's the that's the reference. So uh, the reference what I just now gave was like. 10 10 15 years back yeah. during web fear and those days uh, so we did not use load balancers but we used uh, uh, apache configuration files to do the redirection based on the type of applications right so that i had worked extensively so that i'm aware okay okay because this concept which i asked that was very big very very big confusion for me always like okay <clears throat> to me or uh, it's just not the code is a containerized uh, but uh, it's always having an underneath uh, exactly. uh, server to run on and that's what's getting deployed when this is getting built as part of the build pipeline and then getting deployed into ecs so right. that's how it was so thank you okay big okay. revelation <laughs> so it's a good to have thing right i mean yes, yes. N- not even good to have thing but it's a uh, uh, it's just like the way people want to but containerization concept is all together uh, from a code perspective and then you eventually uh, you can deploy it wherever you can right. the way you said about network okay okay cool thank you i'll, I'll yeah. probably have more questions when we <laughs> go really go for network no yes. worry yeah, networking is very detailed i've covered so i mean after few images on few slides only networking will come so what happens oh. you know any yeah there are Of course, Nginx for example, Tomcat, but people now these days using Nginx server. So Nginx server in configuration, you have the load balancing uh, tag. You can just configure like that way. What happened? You can use Docker DNS, Docker maybe DNS or Docker host port, wherever you want to configure. Okay, you can do configure any place by networking. So ultimately, you want that Docker when the request come to the uh, it, ultimately what happening from Doc inside. the nginx container or uh, tomcat container it will try to go to the internet to uh, get the response now if it's a container to container networking instead of going to internet it will go to the if you mention a, a docker dns or say a host ip for a host uh, ip and port it will go to the node js instead of going to internet that's that's how the configuration works and we'll come to all that anyway So anyway, this is the architecture images part. Um, anyone have any question particular to images? Yeah, 
uh, in case accidentally we have removed that uh, doctor <laughs> uh, docker rma image right so if uh, we execute that so will it copy anywhere uh, keep it uh, locally that image or like again we have to re rebuild it from the repo yeah so if if the image is actually stored in any repository pull it okay if it's not in a repository then you have to build it again uh, then it will be available to your local and next time you must must push it somewhere store it safely we, we keep our photo and videos as a cloud storage to give it safe right so similar way the image that we build um, it, our machine can go wrong the motherboard can bust off and know uh, sometimes the water can spill on our computer and we might lost our code and image right if the image is very um, crucial image um, for your application and you know all it must be in any docker registry and then registry uh, any time you can pull right so if it's available in registry pull it from if it's not in registry you have to build it again okay got it so if it's registry in this is docker hub or ecr you can pull using docker pull command if it's not there to pull it's a fresh image you forgot to push and you by mistake deleted you have to use docker build dash t then image name and path docker file most probably it's is your local uh, working directory a dot just like i how i built here right this is you can build the image okay yeah got it yeah any other questions no i guess okay okay now this is the very important for yes we come to the i think i, I think probably is the most important part because whatever you learn okay conceptually you have to learn but in your life in your working life you have to work with this particular file only right docker file in docker file only whatever your requirement you should mention in the docker file only okay now docker file can be easy can be super complicated based on how you design your docker file my suggestion is always keep your docker file to the simplest possible okay um, in the sense any complexity try to handle the complexity via cell scripting in docker point of view you simply run docker run and then cell script not any other complexity you should do but sometimes it's beyond our expectation we have to somehow handle stuff then you can do but in general you should try to avoid Uh, complicate your Docker file because Docker file is a very simple syntax, right? Why you want to complicate it more? Now, uh, like just go to the key components. Of course, base image. So this from part, this from this from specifies the base image. This is the command, by the way. You see from from part from base image, right? So this this uh, from specifies the base image for the Docker uh, that image is built from. the base image must be first instruction in docker file so if you miss this one for any reason okay then it will uh, consider as a invalid docker file so that is a must and uh, this for example i have shown you from python image i have started then is the uh, okay then there is a base image then you have environment variables so environment variables can be set based on your requirements so if you want to pass on some environment variables you can for example i want to pass on say for example not here uh i think but in some other example i have like say uh, i was passing this kind of uh, environment variables i think uh, last session i was exporting python app is equal to that app chain or something like right? so those this that's a very easy example there could be any reason that you want to pass on some environment variables to the application then you use this environment variables okay <laughs> using this env then copying files now we we first usually best practice to copy the requirements because our uh, requirements actually change very rarely to be honest once we set up anything code changes <laughs> but the module requirement very rarely change <laughs> so uh that's why we first copy the requirement or txt or say any module say <laughs> package or this kind of stuff actually give me one minute i'll just bring water if you excuse me i forgot to bring <clears throat> just a moment
Okay, I'm muted. So, coughing files. Uh, first, we copy the requirement or modules related to requirement.txt or say package.json. What very rarely changes? We first copy that one so that see every suppose you uh, don't copy that one and you copy the your file. So, for example, I'll show you quickly. That will start making sense after that. So, this see this um, requirement.txt since this doesn't change much and we make the code changes that's why it's, uh, it's taken from cache but what if even if you don't change this one okay you just by mistake you put in after the uh sorry yeah. copy command you copy entire code base you do before okay then you try to like if you do that that means requirements already exist for example, you don't uh, do this requirement.txt separately and you copy everything and then you run this uh, pip install requirement. What will happen? So let's do the image building part. It will start making the image. But see, it started from beginning. This copy command run and then run is this. Next time if you run again, it will not because uh, it taken from the cache. If you see here, cache. But what if you make another file changes? So say index pipe, uh, index pi. I want to add another definition. For example, uh, hi, hi there. Okay, any changes? For example, you made. So I have made a changes in the code, not in the requirement or txt, right? So if I try to build the image, it will still first copy the everything and it's still running the requirement, although I didn't want because. I have only four requirements, but production application is 100 and 200 of requirements. If you every time keep, you know, installing all the stuff, networking cost will increase and not just the networking part. It's that uh, time taken to make the image will be unwantedly high. We don't want that. We want to keep the image building part as less as possible, right? So strategically thinking uh, in our Docker file, we must actually first copy the requirements that is uh, like are the modules installation requirements first before copying the entire code so that we have the modules that we need then we must install the requirements so that we don't have to for any other code changes we should not reinstall our domain that's that's doesn't make sense that's dumb right we should not do that then we change the copy code because copying code is just the code getting copies we don't have don't need to do anything special about it right this time for example of course, it taken, uh, see, since the requirement that takes that particular part, actually part of the uh, cache, so it, and it doesn't depend on the code changes, it just taken from cache, right? But the other way, it was taking a lot of time. This time, we're much faster, right? So, so how how you organize your, uh, your Docker file depends how fast you can or how quickly efficiently can you make the images that you have to remember okay that's why copying file part is important then running command so this you know if you have to install the dependencies we need to use or any cell script you want to run or any command that you want to run just mention run this particular run command and space and then whatever you run you can normally run it and uh, while docker image will happen it will run all the commands based on your requirements you can do that that is the exposing part. So exposing part, we want to export actually, say for uh, 80. Okay. So expose, uh, we want to expose for 80, 80, 80. Okay. So that's so that this application can like, or this Docker can be listened on this particular port. We can expose this particular port as well. Okay. Uh, then entry point. So or say entry point, or so you can use CMD kind of same a bit different on a conceptual level, uh, which we might come when you are talking about the Kubernetes, but not now. Otherwise, it will complicate your mind. So yeah, entry point uh, is uh, is the command is executed when the container is run. Uh, this can be specified in Docker file using CMD or entry point commands. For example, run a Python uh, file, you might a command Python, but Py. see for this example, uh, python.py. Or you can check here also. It's Python, then Flask run. Okay, it's it's because it's a Flask application. But if it's normal Python, you can just use you know this command, uh, CMD. Then like after installing requirement and everything, 
then you run at the end how your application should run as an application that behavior you're mentioning in this cmd command python amplified so it will keep the command keep running mode that is the entry point your script that's how you start your application that you are defining by docker okay now uh, this part i have just you know sorry uh, yeah these are the available or say the most uh, common commands that I wanted to cover. Run, you already know. From, you already know. Copy, you understand. Okay. Copy and add command. You need to copy the file. Okay. Uh, and yes, copy command actually prefer over add because fewer side effects like add, it's adding a reference. Copy is actually copying the uh, file permission references as well. I think that was the difference. Why people use copy over the add. Then work directory is where your entry point your application work that's a home directory for your application then env to say different different in my mean see env even you can see use a env port so instead of this expose ATAT, you can i mean yeah env port just to mention for your application but not that so we can just enable uh, export different different uh, environment variables by this uh, env but expose port to, what is the port here your docker list or uh, enables your docker to listen to other application okay or listening port for docker what do you want to say it cmd entry point specified the command that is run when docker image is started as a container cmd used to provide default argument while uh, entry point is specify the main command for example cmd uh, python app so it's saying in the argument that how you are like main application uh, main command is this then what is the next command by space it says differentiate okay that's how it's, it's saying parameter wise for entry point you have to just specify direct command so if you're self scripting that you are executing as a running process then you should use dot then slash that particular command you can use okay okay now uh, the CMD you understand, in the point you understand. Uh, level is adding a more metadata for your application. Suppose some kind of like developed by the metadata, uh, say level developed by your name. If you want to use some other personal details or any other details, or maybe in the Docker build, it, whatever you want to specify, or say version on all that, you can specify in the level. Now, then USER, so user, okay. This uh, said the user of the Docker in the Docker image should be run as, for example, user app user said the app user. So specifically, if you have a custom user configuration that you want to configure inside a Docker image, then you use user. Otherwise, you, you, you don't use that. You have other things, say volume, health check, stop signal. These things, when you go to the ECS learning part, I will cover that one. Okay. So this is the Docker file. Anyone have any confusion in the Docker file? Let me know. I mean, this is the thing you're going to work in your life as a DevOps. Like any engineer, you have to do continuation these days, right? So any doubt in this Docker file? Let me know. Okay, so no questions. Oh, so once we created a, that file, uh, so how to verify that whether the file is valid or not? Uh, so is it possible to verify that? Ah, see, ultimately, you suppose okay, I made a mistake here. For example, I go to this and I do a mistake. I put three dot instead of two dot. Okay. And maybe, for example, let's say the basic mistake what normal people do, they, they don't use the from command. Okay. The moment you try to build, fail to solve the front, uh, the front end Docker file, fail to get a LLB definition. So, lot of image it will give okay so no build stage in the current context that means nothing is there it means so it will start giving error okay so if you miss any point properly in this particular docker file it will say it will throw error it should throw error but i don't know <laughs> copy export in the image it should maybe it, it just copy so sometimes it doesn't give error Say P3, say P4, for example. Any mistake you do, it will it should throw error. Say P4 doesn't found, right? Say fail to running uh, P4 because it doesn't. Use that. So any mistake you do, when you run, it will you can verify by running. Okay. okay. No separate command to validate if I remember right. So let just confirm once. Okay. Say Docker build builder. 
this VS Code extension can help us. That will show some error. Oh, you mean that? Ah, uh, that yeah. is yeah. You can install Docker syntax. Yeah, syntax Docker. That's error. linter. I think you're talking about the linters, right? Okay, I mistake. So this this uh, you can install. It will help you writing Docker file. If you mistake, it will highlight. Okay. Okay. And there is, I think, Docker Explorer also. There is something very uh, managing Docker containers, build uh, Docker images, and all that. You can, if, if, if there is a mistake, will the Docker file be created at first? The Docker file you create, right? You create a file called Docker file. Ha! Huh, but uh, so so okay. Question back to Ram Krishna is: What kind of uh, mistakes? Like, if it's a syntactical errors. It will not create anyways, right? Yeah. Say P4 for the C, it will throw you error. Like ha, correct. Correct. So if it's a, a, the, the kind of like if you gave the wrong host or wrong, uh, you know, mm. uh, and then you, you got this file created somewhere else or mm. of some other application. I mean, that is a sanity mistake. I don't think Docker <laughs> can provide a... Yeah, there's, uh, a, there's a limit to everything. So, correct, of course, correct. it will help you syntax. But what you're achieving, that error you have to build and test and, and then verify. Yeah. There are some behavioral testing is there. Indication testing is there, right? So, <laughs> it correct. all depends. That will help you write the file properly. It will highlight. But see, this P4, it doesn't highlight, right? This this is installed in my machine, uh, this highlighter. But if I put extra dot here, it's saying, okay, uh, it, it should not be there. So remove it. Expose R, for example. It's it's, it's not right. It's right. It's, it's unknown instruction. So I have to remove the R. This things, it will help, but not more than that. P4 is doing able to <laughs> detect, right? We have to run to find out, okay, there is no binary P4 because it's not going inside this to check. There is no pip command. Of course, limitation is there. Okay. Any other uh, doubts in this Docker image file? Again, in the in your life, you will be dealing with this Docker file most cases. Not with networking and all the stuff most like mostly, because networking and all the stuff actually you will be handling using your uh, Kubernetes orchestration right these days. So this image building part is only the main challenge for the image part. So no doubt it seems, okay, we'll move to the next. Now Docker containers is just that, I mean, you already see a container running using Docker PS, if you see Docker, yes, I think I stopped it anyway, but if I remember that I have started uh, one thing was a command. This Docker, I think, I mean, we can get custom images also, that's fine. I'll come to that later. Wait. So Docker containers, what are those? So Docker containers are the running instead of a Docker image. So Docker image is the, the image that you're creating, which is runnable. And running that image is a container. So after you start running the image, that is a, that, that means you're running a container. In the container, it can serve application, it can serve APIs, it can do any processing that you want, and then it will die. If it's a normal process, batch process, it will die. If it's a normal application, it should keep running. So that's the behavior. Now, uh, a container is a lightweight, portable, isolated environment that can run on an application and its dependencies consist, uh, consistently across different system and including development, testing, production environments. So what are the key features of this Docker containers? Isolation, because it's one container you create is isolated from other container. Unless you connect this to a uh, container by networking, because it's have its own file system, network process, namespace, and everything. If you want to connect, you can connect, but that's a separate process altogether. Then it's a lightweight. So Docker container are a lightweight uh, because they share the same kernel as the host system. This means the Docker container requires fewer resources. Traditional normal virtual machine you have to install always this and that X Y Z so heavy. In Docker you don't. You just you can run hundred containers in a single machine if this has a very nominal resources. Uh, portability, Docker container portable. You can run a container anywhere. So that's without saying that. Reproduce, uh, reproducibility because you are creating image from a read-only file system, read-only image. So you can expect the consistent um, or say same, uh, similar or same uh, container altogether unless you manipulate the environment. But normal cases, if you are a single source image, you can 
you are creating a container it will be identical container if you change the parameters it's a different question scalability docker containers can be scaled uh, horizontally by running multiple copies of uh, the same image or multiple containers in general across different system to achieve the scalability now these are the pretty basic you know features of the docker containers uh, and uh, how to use docker say you are running for example i can use docker desktop to run the say run for example optional setting so which is the containers a sample uh, nginx app i want to show you the both way you can use docker desktop and local host in the sense uh, in your uh, the container port is by default 80 it's already mentioning there local let's say 80 80 and volume path as i was saying say from your you can map your local paths with this so that's the host path this is a container path where you want to mount the container path into the host part that you want to do for now i'm not doing that and since it's running we can run docker ps to verify okay the application is running and if we go to the local host for example and 8080 you'll see this nginx page yeah it'll page right now uh, to see the running uh, processes you can you can use the docker let me just center it a bit and make it big. So docker ps command show you the running processor. Docker ps-a show you all the things. It's exited when you run two months back, 12 months back and all that thing that you've done. It will keep showing you all the stuff. But if you just want to see the running processes, docker ps. This command is enough to show that. Okay. Now yeah, let's go to the other commands. Then you... Now you know that how to run the image also. Suppose I want to run this particular, say I have this image. If you can check the images like Docker images and I want to run this particular Python app. So Docker then uh, run this particular image. Then I can create the port mapping before actually. So dash P and let's see the port. What is the My Python. So, say for example, 8080. I don't even remember. So, it's fine. Any dummy uh, port, 80 or 80 is already running. So, if you want to use a port that is already mapped, it'll, it should throw error usually. And for 8000, yeah, because uh, there's already some something is running. So, you have to always use up in the host port, it has to be unique port. For example, 4000, 8000 mapping, it will work. You have to make sure uh, you see this started here uh, it's actually running on 5002 so <laughs> uh, control c stop uh, you can run on 5002 that's the default port of application but then uh, i think that's how it's built also so 5002 uh, and we can run on host port on 4000 whatever so this first part actually the host port your local machine port that will be running the application second part is actually the docker site what is the port exposed to you or whatever port your application is actually running that one and this one is the then is the this uh, what is the, the image name and uh, if you don't mention anything and then do the latest you want to particularly mention what is we running you can do mention like the tag name here and uh, that's it i mean if you want to run on detached mode then give d then you will run on detached mode so i think you have to give it the beginning probably uh, T gives uh, on the detached mode. Yeah. The before uh, after the run command, you just give dash T, then it will run on the detached mode. So that you don't have to keep it uh, like in your console running. If you otherwise, if you stop your console, the application will die. So you're always running in any production application system. You should not even just normally use Docker, you should use keep in this as a stuff or ECS. But in any case, you have the requirement maybe for testing, maybe for a you know a small application experiment and all. In a local, maybe you can experimenting it. So make sure you run on detached mode if you want to keep it running. Okay. So that now you understand. Uh, suppose I want to stop a running container. So Docker PS, I want to see uh, what are the these are the running containers. Let me actually clear the screen a bit. It's so cluttered now. 
Docker PS running containers. I want to stop the nginx part or nginx container. So I can stop by many ways. The easiest way is actually either using name or using ID. I prefer the ID part. So Docker, then stop, then ID, stop. If you do Docker PS, it's not running anymore. So this is how you stop the containers. Now, for example, uh, if you want to uh, remove, say, the stop, but if you do Docker PS, Docker, sorry, Docker PS dash I, sorry, uh, that's A, still these things are running, right? You want to remove or clean up this. So you can do is, you can run Docker, then add him, then this. See what happened, maybe. Okay, names. Any is fine. Mm, stop, right? Okay, exited, right? So let's remove this one. This is the container ID. So Docker RM. Yeah, it removed. So you have to just give the container ID or the container name, it will simply remove. Okay. Uh, logs, if you want to check, then just check the Docker logs and then particular container ID. So say do again list it docker ps see is the running so docker logs then this particular container and you see whatever things are happening you will be able to see here so if i go to say for example uh local host local host 4000 i was listening to see it's okay because the api is working and i think command line i was checking yeah there uh I think that's still running. So if I go check, it might show you. Yeah, see that API came uh, in the root of the uh, root of the API it came. So that's why it's given 200 status is given to me. So this is how you can check log. If suppose anything, you know, any problem happened in the API, uh, in the Docker, sometime in production, you get issues. So you normally go and check by the logs of the ID, white stop, and you see the errors and everything. Okay. Now next come to the other is that going inside the particular uh, container. So let me just pull this one. So Docker exec dash it, then the container ID and then slash bean slash bash. Now bean bash is, is Ubuntu. If it's not Ubuntu, uh, maybe it's Windows, then it could be PowerShell. Maybe for example, if it's... Uh, other other bash system so then this will be other bash usually you know linux bin bash is very common so you may never have to use other command in general but it's good to know that you have other uh, choices you want to be aware of other that okay uh, so then uh, let's run it so docker let's run docker ps because you can go inside if and only if the inst container is running state so this container is running state so let's do docker exec that means uh, executing it in the sense interactive terminal sorry interactive terminal mode then give the container id okay and give the nd product like you have to go inside something ultimately you are running a command and interactively in uh, you're interacting with the command if you don't give a command that is executable interactive you will be out of the particular uh, this execution mode. So you have to be very careful how you're executing it. Usually bean bash is what we do. Okay, slash bean and bash. This is a bash environment we are executing. See, uh, OCI, uh, I fail starting container. Pause, uh, okay, no such, okay. See, it is, there is no such uh, bean bash. I told you it can happen, right? So uh, instead of bean bash, we can do bash. Bash also not supported. Ah. <laughs> so, okay. That means we cannot go inside this particular, I think there is other way. Uh, SH we can try. Yeah, SH, right? Oh, yes. it's, it's told you, right? Somewhere it's been Bash, somewhere it's SH, somewhere it's KSH. So you can, yeah, there, there is SH you can uh, try. Then you can do run commands like LS, LS, A and all that. This is the, the way I was, I think, uh, telling if you don't even have a Linux install, you can have Windows, you can, you know, uh, create a Ubuntu instance and run the Ubuntu instance and then go inside like bin bash or the SSH part. This is what's telling you. 
okay okay so now you understand how to interact like start stop interact with this docker containers let's move to the next part with the docker networking i think docker networking i was saying a lot right so now let's understand what i'm meaning by this docker networking so docker network are used to connect docker container to each and other and to outside world and docker provides several types of docker networking including bridge host overlay maclan and uh, to support this different networking schedule and we will we'll discuss this uh, type of networking after a few slides okay and maybe next slide only let's see um so here are some key differences uh, key features in the docker network isolation docker network provide isolation between different docker containers each container can be assigned to one or more docker uh, network so suppose you are running one container let's say this container and this container so docker let's go exit sorry control z uh, exit or exit one <laughs> uh you can just you know go to another use another we can kill it but there's not kill for our demo so yeah docker ps and let's make it big so this particular uh see this one is running right and this for this we can create i mean we can create multiple virtual network and you can attach multiple virtual network with a single container so that one feature you have okay right now it's isolated no connection between all other the container because no other can run can run running at all but we can run multiple container and can connect each other flexibility docker network provide flexibility in how how containers communicate with each other for example container can be connected to multiple network and different types of network driver can be used to support different network topologies then security docker network provides security by allowing users to control which container can communicate with each other uh, this can be achieved using network policy and access control then we have scalability so docker network provide uh, scalability by allowing users to create multiple containers that communicate with each other this allows application to handle increased traffic and load so load balancing stuff okay <clears throat> now this is the networking command so if you use docker let's make it small so that we can you know do run by seeing the commands that will become make it easier for you and me because i also don't remember all the commands right so now uh say so this docker network command ls part so docker network ls it will list out all the networks so right now by default you have bridge host and none okay but you can add this you know um, overlay bridge host overlay and maclean other than this you can create custom network okay so docker network create then a uh, network name say sandeep network <laughs> for example um, you can you know, name anything to be honest but i'm just creating in this case it could be mongo db network or say mysql or postgresql or db network or maybe example uh, application network application security network so it based on the use cases you define your networking policies so let's create it so this created a networking id now if we do docker network then uh, the particular uh, say ls we'll see sandeep network got added right now uh, for example if you connect this network with another container uh, this find out the other uh, container docker ps you see container id so docker then uh, network connect then this uh, id network name and your application can actually connect with other network just by the network name also now this is a kind of very advanced stuff um, not that you usually getting used but good to know uh, just like you know with the they are saying on a vis use case right for load balancing stuff this can be used now no the docker network connect then network name is sandeep network i am going to attach this network to my uh, running container okay and see now my this container so docker ps is actually uh, connected with this one and if you want to describe even to describe on this and to see how is connected or not you can use docker then inspect 
than this particular uh, container ID. And see, uh, see, Sandeep network is connected to bridge network because it's able to. This container can talk with outer world because it's connected to the bridge network. I'll come to bridge and all that stuff. But it can also suppose we have five container running and five container actually connected to the same. Like normally, what happens if you are connected to the same network, your computer can actually connect to your talk to your phone because it's in the same network, right? So similar stuff you can do uh, if it's all the device connected to a single or uh, same network, right? So it's called intra networking. And uh, you have a network ID, endpoint, gateway, IP address for the network, by the way, and IP prefix, IP six not getting used, MAC address, so it's created a virtual MAC address as well. So you can do all this great stuff. Okay. Now, uh, this is how you see what are the networking details. Now, if you want to disconnect one network, so Docker PS to see the container ID, I forgot, and Docker network ls to see the networks that we have now we want to disconnect docker network disconnect again give the network name sandeep network and then give the container name that is the uh, container id and you see now if we inspect again it doesn't have the other networking details this is how easily we can connect disconnect and verify what networking details we have uh, so th that's uh, great stuff. Um, now, suppose you want to remove this custom networking definition, you can use uh, remove command you now by now very <laughs> get to know. So network, uh, then it is, and I want to remove this custom network. So docker rm, then uh, network rm, docker network work rm, then something network. Yeah, so this is how we discuss the network. Any question they need to software networking, feel free to ask now. Because this is the basic networking stuff. No question, then I will move to the next. Question will come next session. <laughs> when you guys experiment, right? All right. <laughs> okay, okay. Now I was I was like I was telling you guys I will talk about this bridge network. So if you see now. Uh, there is bridge network and you know these things right bridge host right so let's understand by this is the default networking right so we need to understand them and in ECS and all that also you see bridge network host network and if you don't understand what are those you will get confused and you will less you will feel less confident now you are getting no from me and you will have more confidence when dealing with any other cloud or anywhere actually to be honest so yeah Docker provide several network mode that can be used to connect Docker container to each other and maybe outside of the world. Each network mode provide a different network isolation and network connectivity. Um, now, uh, there is four de like default Docker networks comes usually two, but you can enable other tools as well. First one is a bridge network. Okay. Now, this bridge network mode is actually a default network mode for the Docker container. So any container that you create actually by default, go to the bridge mode. Each container is assigned an IP address on the uh, private network and communicate between containers is only allowed within the same network. Just like I told you, Sandeep network that I've created, if I add it five, uh, five container to the network, you know the command for that also now. That means these five containers can talk to each other because they are in the same network. For example, in my house, I have 20 devices. It's under the same network. So 20 devices can talk to each other okay, by their IP addresses and port, by the way. Now, um, this is uh, how, how the networking works. Container can access the outside world uh, through the Docker host network interface. That means my local computer internet can, I mean, if it's a bridge network, it's connectivity network. So that means my containers can talk to the internet or outside of the, my networking or my home network via my this host by this computer network okay uh, i think uh, uh, ram ramakrishna you you have this uh, uh, this particular doubt right uh, to running some you know uh, vpn and all and then via this container so that yeah. one you are using actually bridge network that means using your host but using only your blocking this particular containers networking right now you are that means that your local computers are not getting used but 
the virtualization level is actually inside the container if you are connecting the container and enabling the vpn that means container inside network actually will get vpnized okay now and did you able to make it work uh, that thing ramakrishna that uh, that vpn stuff i uh, know huh no no bro i mean you tried or just not tried yet i guess you didn't try it yet right Yeah, yeah I didn't. Okay, yeah, you should try once just for your curiosity. Okay, you are okay. getting so knowledgeable on these things now, right? So why not try it out? Now, okay. uh, this is the bridge network mode. Then this is the host network. So in the host network mode, Docker containers share the same network namespace as the Docker host. This means that the container are assigning the same IP addresses as the host, and they can. access network resources directly without the network address translation so that means is bridge mode that means our containers behind the uh, bridge uh, bridge network or so behind this particular uh, local computers or any computers behind there is the container network but if it's a host network mode that means whatever is a host directly connected to the network our container will actually act like a normal host or normal client devices and connect directly to the router without any via by your computer so direct connection no via our computer okay then we have overlay network mode so this overlay network mode is used to connect docker container across multiple docker host and this uses a software defined network or sdn to create a virtual network that span across multiple host and allowing containers to communicate with each other uh, regardless of the physical location so it's kind of a you're creating a virtual networking and all other docker uh, container connecting the virtual networking so that even though they are on different 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 host they can connect or they talk over a virtual network when they are everyone connected okay and then there is a mac vlan network mode to so the mac vlan network mode allow docker containers to be directly connected to the physical network which allows them to assign ip just like the host network kind of very equivalent and this mode is used for application that require direct access to the physical network such as network monitoring or packet sniffing tools so again it's kind of some kind of network application you're developing then only you will need it and see you can use the bridge like you can specify uh, while running the container if you want to specify particular uh, networking that you want to use you can specify like this docker run network equals to either bridge or host you have the host networking also right you can use bridge networking because host networking if you have available say overlay networking and mac vlan networking you can mention that as well right now this is how you can use the containers in advanced way by development networking tools okay now Yes, now when we are we're talking about networking tools, then let's come to the networking tool. So, networking tool, what we have? We have Compose. I think you guys know the Compose. It's it's for defining multi-container Docker application. When you have multiple Docker, say for example, for DB, you are using Redis. Um, uh, then, for so not so DB or Catch using Redis for DB using PostgreSQL image for application using Python and all all. this application talking to each other right of course you can use uh, networking and uh, for networking i explain easy way but not that everyone understand it easy way they find it super complicated for them to connect over the network becomes super complicated so what they use this kind of tool they use to simplify all this ultimately behind the scenes they will use this command connecting over the network and all that docker network connect then the network id and you know the the container id but some people don't undo well, go through this complicated part right so that's why they use this docker compose which help them handling this multi docker level uh, multi docker container connectivity then we have the docker network cli and this docker network is a command line tool for managing docker networks the network command that you use this is talking about that one only then docker network inspector this docker network inspector command is uh command line tool for troubleshooting network issues in docker uh, containers then you have a wave scope so wave scope is a tool for virtualizing and monitoring docker networks 
uh if you're running uh, you know containerize we given it is also the actual given it is a lot more better tools when covering the given is i will talk to them talk about them then you have a calico now calico is a network plugin for docker that provide advanced networking features such as policy based network segmentation this kind of advanced policy based networking then network isolation network encryption now, network encryption is very uh, complicated but very interesting topic when you want to make sure the connectivity or connection happening uh, that's super secure and no man in the middle attack possible any way then only you talk about this network encryption and all that then uh, uh, i mean yes calico can be used to deploy manage and manage large scale docker environment such as kubernetes clusters and to secure containerized applications so yeah you can use calico as a host and i'm not demons uh, uh inside kubernetes for this in you know, a virtual networking and all these requirements again when coming to kubernetes we are going to cover a lot including this calico as well okay then we have the docker dns i think this is another important part so docker dns the docker domain name system is used to resolve domain name ip addresses within the docker containers suppose you don't want to remember the network name you don't want to supply all this long addresses and all what you can do you can create the virtual uh, say dns which will resolve to the container and its port okay easy way so that in your application maybe you are connecting the particular port or host but ultimately it will resolve you to the dns that you supply in the dns command okay so uh this dns server is responsible for resolving of course domain name to ip addresses and it can be configured to use different dns server to forward dns uh, packets or the traffic to another dns server that you also you can do now what are the some key features of this docker dns default dns server by default docker container use dns server uh pipe uh, service provided by the docker host this allow uh, containers resolve domain name to ip addresses so if we go if we go to our what is this about this dog the host missing is docker so if you go to cd slash uh etc uh then if we do cat hosts you'll see this one right so this is the resolver that we get the host host based resolver now the moment we give dns that means it will first listen to this custom dns configuration that we are supplying here then only it will look at our computers or machines host to resolve the different different uh, traffic or different even domains okay now uh, then you have the custom dns server the docker allow user to configure like this is the custom dns one then is the dns catching uh, this docker catches the dns record locally to the docker host to improve the performance and reduce the network traffic the dns cache is periodically refreshed to ensure it is have the up to date so every time you add your domain or dns data to your domain record manager they ask you to enter the ttl or time to leave so based on that time to leave parameter only this docker uh, catching looks that that time they, they do hold as a catch then there is dna round robin so docker uses the dns round robin to load balance network uh, request across multiple containers this means that multiple containers can be assigned to the same as you guys already know by now and docker will automatically describe network request across them then you have the network aliases to so which docker allow to uh, assign a network to the uh, aliases to the container uh, which can be used to map multiple domain names to the same container so yeah you can like have multiple uh, you know do like domain name you can suppose you are you if you have ever hosted any site uh, multi domain site any machine this kind of works that way based on the url or domain name their configuration or inside the container it will work now this kind of advanced concept again all advanced part will be handling in the given this uh, chapters now there is uh, now user can configure docker dns by specifying the dns as a dns option when running a container a docker container for example use a custom dns server so normally what happen if you add any custom dns configuration in this etc host in your linux or <clears throat> oh, mac in um, in windows also there is a host path i forgot the actual path maybe in system 32 you have it 
uh, there also you have the similar kind of the syntax kind of similar. So um, you can add this. That is a default DNS server for your host. Custom DNS when you supply the this Docker run and dashes DNS command. That is a custom uh, DNS command you are supplying. So this is how the Docker DNS works. Okay, Docker volume again. I have less time, so I will now speed it up. And all these things in practically will cover in you know future container session in uh, Kubernetes session. So it's good. Now Docker volumes. Now by now you understand anything multiple time talk about volumes. It's just simply you are mapping your hard disks or say do Docker temporary file system to your hard disk. That is all volumes too. And you can create volumes like Docker volume ls. So if you do Docker Let's see quickly show the commands. Docker volume ls. It will show the any volume that so we have two volumes that I've created for my you know MongoDB use cases. You can do. You can create new volume. Say Docker volume create then volume name, and you can then run Docker volume then volume name mount points so where you want to mount the point from the volume whatever folder you mount or whatever file system say path you mount you can mount the same volume or same host path with the uh, this uh, docker path using this mount point um, then you have to just provide the image name and if you want to inspect how like how, what is the other configuration mount point and all that you can run docker volume then inspect the volume name and will will do mount uh, inspect on that and you want to delete this uh, volume uh, you can do do run docker volume rm then the volume id this one okay when you create you will get this kind of ids Okay, then we have Docker orchestration. Now, Docker orchestration simply means managing the containers. Uh, now, there are in orchestration main fo mainly famous as are the Docker Swarm and Kubernetes. Again, Docker Swarm very, very, very rarely getting used. I I didn't see any. Uh, nobody come to me for Docker Swarm to be honest. So it mainly help in you know container deployment, managing containers, scaling, discovery, load balancing, rolling updates, uh, high availability maintenance, and all that. You can achieve this container uh, orchestration. And again, Kubernetes is the boss here. Above that, no other tools is there. Again, uh, easy to use, simpler version could be ECS, AWS ECS. You can uh, maybe you want to check it before moving to Kubernetes. Kubernetes uh, to be honest, a bit complicated at the beginning, even long term uh, learning goal is there. That's why even when we cover Kubernetes so long, right? Because a lot of things to cover. That's the reason. Okay. Okay. So we covered the basic stuff yet. Now let's cover the advanced stuff within the next 30 minutes. So uh, Docker one, question, for... one question, Sandeep. Uh, what? Mm -hmm. uh, what? Um, the thing is that if we learn ECS, mm -hmm. then can we work in kubernetes of course the basic part yeah docker okay. what if you're learning all this you know volumes uh this stuff you know when you go to work with ecs you're going to reuse all this concept there because they are okay. Using okay. Okay. okay ecs is pure docker based system okay okay eks is kind of its own entire you know own entire space you can say Okay, anyway, when we're covering, we'll go through everything, right? <clears throat> mount point is that, uh, see, volumes is present in mount, uh, build mounts is not present and it will go away if you restart the container. That's the only difference. Uh, again, not at this moment, um, you might, it might not make, start make sense because EBS, NFS, I was talking about in this part. It's just, you can read it, okay? If you don't understand, it's fine. Just read it uh, later on. Because I have to show you all this thing, then it will start making sense. Otherwise, it will not start making any sense. And it takes time for this explanation. Now, <clears throat> this is actually a bit new. Uh, so Docker Build Kit actually, you know, they have released uh, recently, uh, not recently, but a few a year back. Uh, now, what is it? Docker Build Kit is actually a tool for building Docker image that provide improved performance and security over the traditional Docker build uh, process. Bit faster version of build to be honest. The build is a new build uh, engine that was designed to be more efficient and flexible than the old engine. And uh, what are the things that it gives the parallelism? So, build kit allows parallelism, it gives the catchy management, it gives the security, it uh, gives the extensibility. And uh, Docker syntax also new syntax, uh, Docker but syntax does provide like new syntax and new improved syntax. Also, you will have it here now. In, a, in order to enable this Docker build kit, you have to do 
enable like to export docker build kit equal to one then only you can start using this build kit it's just an improved version of normal kit that's it but you need to know otherwise you might be missing this okay so that's it i mean not super urgent but you might need to know uh, this one maybe you need to know at the current interviews also they asking because suppose you have built an image say this this apple laptop is actually a R, arm so any image by default i build it will be arm now suppose i want to run this image into any ec2 based instance or anywhere it will not work because the cpu architecture itself is different the, the thing that you're saying make a image then it will run everywhere same there is actually a bit clauses are there cpu architecture of this image has to be same otherwise that image will not work so uh, while normally developing in ubuntu, uh, ubuntu and you know other oss uh, where your cpu architecture intel based or 8000 8, 8, processor or 80x processor they they're all same but the moment you're building on uh, systems in your MacBook, which is ARM based, and then you try to run that in a say, AR, uh, AMD based system, it will start throwing error because the CPU architecture. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, you might want to go back to the very first session video when I talked about the CPU architecture. I'm not going to discuss the CPU architecture again, but there are many CPU architecture, famous are 80x, uh, and uh, then uh, you have ARM and all that. ARM specifically for the mobile apps and ATX are kind of for the uh, computers and you know, desktop and all those kind of stuff. Now, uh, again, I have again here also mentioned the different, different architecture. So AMD 64 uh, in, into 86 uh, uh, 64, that is the most common architecture used for most modern desktop and server processors. Then ARM v6, this is the architecture used by the older Raspberry Pi, which is Raspberry Pi 1, Raspberry Pi 2. Then ARM v7, this is the architecture used by Raspberry Pi models such as Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. Then ARM 8 or Arch, that is the architecture used by the newer 60 bit ARM processors such as Raspberry Pi 4 and Amazon Graviton processor. You must have heard, heard this, I heard this word Graviton. So this is a processor based on ARM version 8 okay or R64 power PC this architecture used by IBM power PC processors commonly used for high performance computing environments then IBM Z which is architecture uh, used by IBM mainframe and commonly used for enterprise environment then you have S390 is architecture used by SBM so this and IBM sorry so you have all this now how to build for each different different system you see docker then build x here you see that x command so Docker build X, then build. Now, instead of just build using build X, then give the build command. So, Docker build X, then space build, then uh, platform, then uh, you have to give the target platform, say Linux, uh, then slash uh, AMD64, or maybe ARM v6, or ARM v7, or maybe it's ARM64, or maybe, you know, S30. And you can also make multi image image in a single image okay uh then that, that means that image will size will be higher based on the images uh consumer it will automatically switch to that so docker build x then build then space platform so it does just platform then linux dash arm 64 comma linux uh sorry amd 64 comma linux slash arm so it's you're building an image targeting to platform both amd 64 and arm 64 okay now, anyone have any question in this architecture part? I think this is a very interesting part. So, anyone have any question? Because normally, if you use a Mac guy, okay, then you will face an issue, or maybe you are using a very uh, lower cost PCs, which probably going to be an ARM based uh, um, processor. And if you want to run that same image into the EC2 instance base or ECAs or EKs, for example, or say Kubernetes, for example, you will start throwing it, will start throwing it. And you, you will say, say why why is this happening? Is running fine in my local? Why is not running in the um, Kubernetes or say other places? That could be the reason because the architecture itself is a different. So you might want to imprint this particular logic in your mind for your interviews also and in your real uh, real life work environment systems. Any questions? So, yeah. One question, Sandeep. Mm -hmm. So if you are uh, if you are if you are using Mac and mm -hmm. if you want to Build a like a x86 
image. So mm. we should use this syntax, is it like that? Right, or, this uh, one. Uh, for AMD or uh, 86 bits, yeah, first one. Docker, build X, build platform, Linux, M. Because all the EC2 instances you see, unless you use Graviton, for example, which is a mm. ARM64, this one. See, that's why I wanted to cover this part in this drop, this course itself. Uh, you will be developing for EC2s, Ubuntu and all that, right? So most machines is actually the first one, but sometime you may want to use Graviton plus a better performance and lower cost sites. Then the image has to be different. It has to be this one, Docker Buildex platform, ARM64. So before even you know you start generating image for a cloud instances, you might want to see that what is the CPU architecture of the cloud instance. You want to see that one. Okay. But most cases is this one, Buildex platform AMD 64. If you do that, it's going to work. Nine, nine so, so if you are uh, building, you should be using that first command only, right? Right, right. Whenever but you want to get up. Yes. Or, but for example, up, you want to build up, image up. for your uh, Raspberry Pi or maybe mm -hmm. uh, say robotics thing. They are also mm -hmm. ARM okay. based processor going. So we have to be very mindful mm -hmm. about the CPU. Just mm -hmm. check once. Where you're targeting, what is the CPU processor architecture? That's it. Then based on the architecture base, you can run commands. See, normal cases, you're not going to get out, out of this AMD and ARM. That's the way. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Ah, multi -stage. I think this one is kind of pretty important also. In production, uh, when you run these images, okay, we normally don't use the single images. The, the, the images you see the here. I, I personally don't use this one. I use like this, where we have multi stages in first stage we use as a builder and second stage, we, or maybe I even have the another stage called test, which I didn't cover here because in the CI CD phase, I want to cover that one. So we'll be in the CI CD phase, we'll be covering multi stage images with the test also there. For now, this thing that in Docker multi stage build, it allows uh, user to create a Docker images that are optimized for production environment while still using a single Docker file. And multi stage uh, build uh, allow user to complete uh, compile code, install dependencies, generate artifact. Um, on a stage and then copy only necessary files to the final stage. The result are the smaller and efficient Docker images that are optimized for production use. So this is how we can limit the size of the image and make it better, more performance-wise. Okay. So what do we have say for a Python application? Uh, first stage is actually you are building all the requirements and I'm generating a wheel file or say runnable file. Okay. Then what we're doing? Then I'm using uh, say again. Second stage, okay. Again, see how to differentiate first and second stage. First stage from Python 3.8 Slim Buster as the command as part, you see, as builder. So, this is how we are starting one stage as a builder. Then, work directory setting, then you're setting uh, requirement.txt, installing all the requirements, copying everything, all the code base, okay. And then we are running run python setup.py build will so in the build will we are exporting all the dependencies and everything okay then in the uh in the second stage what you're doing you're using from python 3p8 slim, uh, slim blaster uh, we can run as a production but since it's only second image and it's a final image we don't have to we are saying again setting the work directory in app whatever thing we have generated from the builder so uh so copy then there's just from builder app dist start dot whl then we are running the run pip install no cache directory and we are installing all the dependencies again uh, all the all the dependencies for whl and then uh, we are running a cmd python again here what will happen only the required requirements only get installed nothing else even the builder version will not get installed okay then cmd python dash m my app. So because uh, while copying, you will have the my app. Okay. Now here, interestingly, the source code, okay. The source code from here is actually kind of getting messy so that you sometimes don't want the image to be decrypted. Then those cases you can do. I mean, I have very complicated use cases of image where I kind of, uh, you know, encrypt it plus password protected the image. So nobody can see the source code, only they can expose to the port and they can listen to it, nothing else. I developed those kind of thing in the past as well, based on the requirement of clients. 
so yeah that is a docker multi stage build and yes docker logging and monitoring log part you already see the docker log then the container uh, particular id and you will see the container similar way docker logs um, if you want to uh, real time you want to see then dash f command you want to use if you want to view logs from the stop container then docker logs container then tell like last 100 commands you can see then you can do say run driver so based on the different driver based system you can do check that one docker monitoring command you can check docker stat like this So if you just exit uh, to this, so if you run Docker, stat, you can see. Okay, it's stored. It's not. Let's see, stat. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So you see the status also. What is it running and all that? How much is the change of CPU percentage? Um, new uh, usage and limit and all this stuff you can see here. Okay. uh then you have docker inspect you by now understand it's more of checking inside docker ps2 run uh, see the running containers docker psa to see what is the uh, stop running del don't delete it stop and running containers you can see there so yeah uh, it uh, now what is a log driver docker provide a variety of logging driver that can be used to manage and store container logs that is a log driver then you have log collections so once the log are generated by docker container they must be collected and stored for analysis and troubleshooting that's a docker provide a built in log collection tool called docker logs that you command when you use then you have docker monitoring docker monitoring containers and application is essential for maintaining the performance and availability that's a docker provide a built in call uh, a tool called docker stat you saw the docker stat also it just simply shows the current stats cpu percentage uh, what what container using how much of the resources It will be help. It will help you understanding the cloud side requirement when you run going to run this application. Okay, then Docker health checks. If you want to see that particular, what is the health of the container that you're running? Is it stop? Is it having some problems? Whatever the health issues, we can see that directly into that uh, kind of health check to see that is it Docker runnable or not. That kind of stuff you can do with the health checks. Okay. And yes, so mainly the theory and practical part you covered. i will just i have just given you different different example how to you know uh, containerize python file different different python files how to containerize a go docker file okay how to containerize a node js docker file uh, how to containerize a java docker file all this stuff when i upload document will have it there and yes and that's it guys yes we did it